Kebanyakan rakyat Malaysia menginginkan masyarakat yang berbilang kaum dan harmoni. Namun, apabila Malaysia cuba menguatkuasakan sebuah dasar anti-diskriminasi, ia mendapat tentangan yang kuat. Apa sebenarnya yang terjadi? Ini adalah Konvensyen Antarabangsa Penghapusan Diskriminasi Kaum. Ia sebuah instrumen hak asasi yang mengandungi prinsip-prinsip untuk membantu semua negara menangani diskriminasi kaum, selaras dengan hasrat kebanyakan rakyat Malaysia. Masalahnya, kebanyakan rakyat Malaysia tidak diberi peluang untuk benar-benar memahaminya. Tapi, kemungkinan besar daripada kamu pernah dengar nama singkatnya, ISERD. One of the most significant findings is that Malaysians actually are not aware of what ICERT is. You know, despite all the hoo-ha that happened and the protests that took place in 2018, there was uh, little to no information uh, actually about what it really is. When we supplied this Malay translation to the convention uh, to the participants of the FGD, and when they read it and they can understand it, actually there were some uh, participants who sort of change their viewpoints a bit. They were like, oh, okay, if this is what it's about, then it's not too bad. Sebelum itu, hanya 3% daripada responden berkata mereka memahami ISAID dengan sepenuhnya, dengan 50% langsung tak pernah dengar tentang ISAID. Namun, apabila Kerajaan Pakatan Harapan mencadang untuk meraktifikasikan ISAID pada tahun 2018, segelintir rakyat Malaysia menentangnya secara agresif. Kajian ideas mendapati bahawa antara orang yang menentang ISAID, kebanyakannya adalah kerana kesetiaan politik mereka. Sama juga dengan orang yang menyokong. Support or opposition to ICERT is also quite tied to uh, political beliefs. We would find that uh, those who are more inclined to supporting the government then, which is was the PH government, would uh, be supportive or rather would not be aggressively against ICERT. But those who supported the opposition then, the uh, the BN coalition, would then have more uh, resistance towards ICERT. Tentangan ini meningkat sehingga terbentuknya gerakan anti-ISIL. Perhimpunannya dihadiri oleh lebih 50,000 orang dan perbalahan sengit di media sosial berterusan selama beberapa minggu. Akhirnya, kehangatan gerakan itu memaksa kerajaan pakatan untuk membatalkan peraktifikasi ISIL. One of the main reasons why the ISIL issue became uh, very heated is because of the political context, right? So during that time, uh, when PH was in power, there was a perception that uh, it was a Chinese dominated government, which uh, I think was then sort of uh, played up by certain narratives on social media, on WhatsApp, which then caused a lot of discomfort and caused uh, some suspicion, I suppose, of the government then. And uh, that's when the ICE ratification issue came. So, you know, I think Combining those two just did not help the narrative to support ISIL, and it became very inflammatory, and it became very easy for certain people or certain groups to use that situation to uh, paint a false picture of what ISIL is. Even amongst those who support it or is familiar with it, uh, there is little understanding about it still. So they just know the name, and they know that okay, this is a convention on. Based relations, but they don't really know about it in detail. So, to support for it doesn't mean that you actually understand it well. Namun, sesetengah responden memang ada kerisauan yang spesifik tentang kesesuaian ISAID di Malaysia, khususnya dasar tindakan afirmatif yang ditetapkan dalam perkara 153 Perlembagaan Persekutuan. Tapi, ramai pakar undang-undang telah memberi pendapat bahawa dasar-dasar ini boleh diteruskan dengan ISAID. In ISAID. Article 1 clause 4 and Article 2 clause 2 there is a clear mention that there is a need to rectify historical injustices and to enrich formal equality with functional equality and substantive equality but it also says special measures should not be permanent so i think that's the issue that scares some people that in icert affirmative action provisions are not to be in eternity they must be removed when that is not necessary article 153 clause 1 says that the yang di pertonagong shall protect the special position of malays and the natives of sabah sarawak and the legitimate interests of other communities now this is often forgotten in article 153 clause 2 the yang di pertonagong can make reservations and quotas but it says of such proportion 
the word used is proportion in other words no 100% reservation so i think article 153 clause 1 can be administered to be based on need rather than on race because of the words reasonable reasonably necessary proportion Secondly, ICERD and other international treaties allow member nations to join with some reservations. And that's what actually happened when Malaysia created the Human Rights Commission Act. It says we hereby abide by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but subject to the reservation that we will not violate our own constitution. 48% responden juga percaya bahawa ISIS akan mengancam status Islam sebagai agama rasmi. Satu lagi isu yang golongan pakar percaya tidak berasas. 55 daripada 57 negara dalam Pertubuhan Kerjasama Islam telah meratifikasi ISIS. Hanya dua negara sahaja yang ketinggalan, Brunei dan Malaysia. So obviously these other Muslim countries do not see any threat to Islam by being signatory. For example again in the UK There is a Church of England and the king, uh, the monarch is the head of the Church of England that does not in any way violate ICERD. Uh, ICERD has nothing to do with whether you are secular or whether you are the- theocratic or which particular religion um, is the official religion of the state. Uh, ICERD nowhere opposes monarchies. When it comes to ICERD and the position of the Yang Di Pertonagong and the nine uh, Malay Sultans, there is absolutely no connection. In much the same way, the British king is under no threat from ICERD. Uh, Britain, of course, ratified ICERD long time ago. Kini, hampir empat tahun selepas perhimpunan anti-ISIS, persepsi sedang berubah. Lebih 40% kini akan menyokong ISIS jika perkara 153 dilindungi. Namun, ada satu lagi hujah yang biasa didengari. Dasar-dasar Malaysia telah membantu kita hidup dengan harmoni selama ini. Jadi, kenapa kita perlukan ISIS? It is a signal actually to the rest of the world, at least Malaysia's interest and commitment to more uh, positive race relations in the country. So, Malaysia is actually a really great example of how communities, different race and religions can live together in harmony for decades, right? Uh, and actually, a lot of countries look up to us as being this really great example uh, of how national harmony, national unity can be achieved. So, I think we shouldn't shy away from making that statement at the world stage by ratifying a convention such as ICERD.